It was late spring, 1963. I was winding down my third grade year. Like most days, I turned the 10 minute walk home from school into an hour or more adventure through the woods. There were always new stones to pick up, new treasures to discover. And each time I looked under a rock, it was like opening a present and seeing something that no one had ever seen before. And these woods, these woods were full of such gifts just lying around in plain sight, waiting to be uncovered. On that day, while walking past a small tree, I naively extended my hand to a young chickadee perched on one of its lower branches. And to my complete surprise, it actually hopped onto my finger. I froze, amazed, studying every detail of its beak and feathers. And then our eyes locked. And all of a sudden, I became aware that this other life was also studying me. And that's when I got it. We are all interconnected. Nature is not just about the structure and shape of things, but more importantly, it's about our relationships with those things. Walking into the nano world is just like walking into those woods, just at a much, much smaller scale. Today, we'll take a look at some of the nano rocks that surround us. Let's turn them over and see what unexpected things we might uncover. At roughly five to six feet tall, we stand midway between things in the nano world and things the size of Jupiter and the sun, which is about a billion times larger than we are. And we are a billion times larger than things in the nano world. And while the laws of physics are the same in each domain, the dominant forces and properties differ. Biomolecules such as DNA and proteins are two key residents of the nano world that take advantage of the special properties that emerge at the nano scale. So what's the big deal about nano? For the last four decades, the cost of most goods has increased by a factor of five or 10. Houses, cars, gasoline, stamps, eggs. And yet the cost of a transistor has decreased more than a million fold. What that means is that the amount of memory in your cell phone back in 1976 would have cost about $9 million. Today, the cost is just $4. That's one of the many benefits that comes from miniaturization. And semiconductor companies have been successfully mass producing computer chips for more than five decades. However, it's becoming increasingly difficult to continue shrinking the size of a transistor, which is now smaller than a virus. In fact, the cost to build a state-of-the-art semiconductor manufacturing plant today is pushing $11 billion. That community recognizes the need for radically new approaches to how we design and build really small stuff. Fortunately, Nature offers us some potential solutions through a hierarchy of fabrication options. On the one hand, we have subtractive methods like erosion and etching. And on the other hand, we have the programmed adaptive assembly that all living systems use to grow and replicate. Each day, your body self-assembles more than a trillion copies of your DNA. But to truly appreciate the beauty of life's machinery, let's compare the output from a state-of-the-art semiconductor plant to the growth of a baby. In September 1972, I was in my seat, ready for my first day of freshman chemistry. The bell rang, but there was no professor. 20 minutes later, the door flies open. And in walks this young professor, his hair totally disheveled, his lab coat was misbuttoned. And after a brief introduction, he proceeds to the blackboard and begins writing down chemical expressions and rate equations. I can't do this anymore. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? 
I can understand why a freshman might be stressed on their first day of class, but not the professor. But he shares with us that his wife and he were expecting their first child that day, and all he could think about was them. And so he want, wanted to introduce us to chemical reaction rates by way of growth of his child. And that was the beginning of a great class. For that baby is accumulating amino acids at an incredible rate. So fast, it's like each person on the planet, every day, writing 150 million books. Now, an amino acid is like a bio bit, as it rep represents a unique piece of information that self-assembles into a specific section of protein. That child is accumulating bio bits a hundred and million times faster than that state-of-the-art facility can build one bit for a computer chip. Now, about 15 years ago, while preparing to teach a class on smart materials, I called up our child's pediatrician who was expecting, and I asked her, how much more food does a woman need to eat during pregnancy? And she said that for the first trimester, nothing much, but for the second and third trimesters, about 300 calories a day. And with that information, I began to appreciate how truly energy efficient that baby's growth processes are. For that baby accumulates bio bits with 300 million times less energy than that state-of-the-art semiconductor plant uses to build one bit for the chips in your cell phone. Our bodies are extremely efficient and gentle factories. And they manage the billions of networks and processes and materials every day using something that we call nanotechnology. The Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering is a wonderful shared environment where scientists and engineers and entrepreneurs and other creative folk can support each other to transform useful nanomaterials and nano properties into compelling and high value applications. We're keenly interested in the relationship between form and function in nature. And one joint school team is studying the cicada. And as they zoom in on the wings, a sea of nanocones emerges. And these nanocones are tuned to absorb certain colors of light. In fact, they're tuned to absorb the specific colors of light that its predators are looking for to track their prey. These nanocones allow the cicada to fly in stealth mode. This simple biosystem is inspiring the joint school team to create new generations of cloaking materials that will protect our assets from potential threats. Take a look at Regina Dugan's TED talk on the hummingbird, which is the only bird that can fly backwards and upside down. Her team at DARPA was very interested in highly maneuverable systems, and her demonstration of an artificial hummingbird is a wonderful example of a nature-inspired system that uses nanotechnology. In her talk, she mentions geckos, which are those animals that can climb on any surface because of the thousands of hair-like adhesive projections on their feet. These structures have inspired something called gecko tape, and she notes that a four by four inch piece of gecko tape is strong enough to hold up six 42 inch television sets. Well, the team at the Joint School is also studying geckos, and as they zoom in on just a few hairs on the foot, a beautiful cascade of nanostructures emerges. But they're also studying other animals and insects, such as the fruit fly. And they note that it also shares similar fleshy appendages and other structures that give us clues as to how to further enhance the properties of gecko tape. Another team is studying the incredible structural properties of nanomaterials. For example, they're laminating together ultra-thin sheets of carbon nanofibers like you would fiberglass. And when they fashion this material into a structure that looks like a one-foot ruler, they find that not only is it extremely light, but it's strong enough to hold up seven cars. Now, if you think even thinner still to a single sheet of carbon atoms called graphene, which comes off your pencil every time you touch it to paper, if you roll graphene up into a tube called a nanotube, that structure is stronger than steel. And one day, this unusual material may enable some 
amazing applications, such as a space elevator. For if we were able to twist together 100 continuous nanotubes into a thread, and then braid 100 of those threads into a rope, it would have the diameter of about one human hair. And it would be strong enough to hoist a 1,400-pound object, which is the typical weight of a dairy cow, into space. I'm a fly fisherman. Just think what such a string could mean for fishing. Another team is collaboratively designing a bio-inspired system that will have a major impact on medical diagnostic devices. Today, they're studying something called moderate traumatic brain injury because no tool exists today that can monitor and diagnose the ultra-low levels of the brain signaling molecule in the blood. Their challenge is like trying to detect a single drop of blue food coloring in a lake the size of 20 million Olympic swimming pools. This interdisciplinary team has found a potential solution by marrying the special properties of tiny metal nanoparticles with a nanomaterial comp that complements the brain's signaling molecule. They find that if they place a drop of blood from someone with moderate traumatic brain injury on the system, it lights up like a lighthouse. And one day soon, they plan to integrate this system into a portable device that will be able to diagnose and monitor moderate traumatic brain injury. And the future of healthcare is even more amazing. About a decade ago, NASA became interested in a hospital on a particle to monitor and maintain astronaut health during long space flights. It would behave sort of how your white blood cells protect your body today. Well, the size of today's transistors and electronic devices are so small that we're very close to being able to build an entire laboratory on a particle that could hang out near a critical organ and alert us to the early onset of disease. And your smartphone, which uses a lot of nanotechnology, is already having a profound impact on healthcare resources. In his 2009 TED Med Talk, Eric Topol shared his vision for wireless medicine. Your smartphone can simultaneously monitor seven vital signs, perform a handheld ultrasound, and monitor glucose levels from an implanted prosthetic. As we continue to shrink down the size of these applications, we'll be able to put more and more of them into our smartphones. And one day soon, your cell phone will also be able to serve as your portable, personal medical scanner. These types of emergent properties are what distinguish the nano world from our everyday experiences in nature. They're stimulating tremendous innovation and revolutionizing how we design and build new and useful products. By combining smart nanomaterials with textiles, for example, we can create new generations of fabrics that will meet the needs of our aging population. The bringing together of high value nanomaterials with traditional markets, such as furniture and textiles, transportation and agriculture, and emerging sectors such as energy and medicine are catalyzing entrepreneurship and job growth. These innovations position us well to catch the rising tide of manufacturing that's slowly returning to our shores. We are passionate about nurturing and inspiring the next generation to dream big dreams and to get excited about really small things and to share those aha moments with others. For the last few years, the joint school has worked with local middle schools to compete for experimental space in the shuttle and now the International Space Station. And so far, two of those classes have actually had their experiments performed in space. How wonderful it is to see these students develop their critical thinking skills. We need more hands-on opportunities for young people of all ages to explore their relationships with the world in and out of the classroom. A few years ago, a pair of red-tailed hawks took up residence in our neighborhood. One day, a few months later, while working outside, I 
heard one of the parents call to their adolescent sitting in a nest about 100 yards away. And I saw that young bird slowly rise and step out onto a branch. And after another call, I watched that young bird extend its wings and then make a few desperate calls back, which I interpreted as saying, you want me to do what? But after a few more calls of encouragement, I watched that young bird step off its branch and take its first flight to its parent. Nature offers us tremendous hope for a bright future through a treasure hunt of clues that are already benefiting society in areas such as information processing, stealth, adhesive and structural technologies, and healthcare. It encourages us to step out of our comfort zones, to share what we discover, and to apply what we've learned. So pick up life's rocks and look under them wherever you are and share what you find. For each of us and everything we uncover is another thread in nature's colorful and dynamic tapestry. And in the end, we might realize what we've always known deep down inside, that not only are we all interconnected, but that we share an unlimited creative potential. The nano world is a wonderful and magical place that will inspire us to achieve great things for generations. Let's continue to explore it together. Thank you.